Okay, so uh, good morning again. As I told you, before I go to the chapter, I'd like to come back to some of the tips that you can bear in mind uh, during your initiation to training. So uh, the introduction part, I didn't deal with it last time, so I deal with it today. Okay. So uh, you are embark, you are about to embark on your teaching practice. So anyway, so you observe observation. It says that observation is important. Okay, uh, and this workbook has been designed to add in your observation of your mentor and yourself. Uh, the next thing it says is that you have been introduced to the most important theories, you know, tips, okay, for doing teaching. But uh, practice is also important. Theory alone, however, will never produce competent teachers, just as experience alone is insufficient as a basis for development. So theory and practice, both sh they should go both together. Uh, theory and practice will have to go hand in hand for you to be able to develop a critically reflective approach. That's why I asked you about that book, because it also talks about this idea of reflective approach. Okay, we will talk about it. To teaching that can be used with any teaching method. And this material, as you have noticed from last time, it is made in such a way to help you with that, okay? Uh, so, now this material, this booklet, etc., observation task does not present task in order uh, you are supposed to do them, okay? You are supposed to do your own, okay? You have to make a, a study to do study. You study the examples in here okay this is a very important point and you try to make your own okay yes to make, to come up with your own because you could you can notice that they focus on different aspects of teaching right and yes what you have to do for you is to try to come up with one task that includes all the different aspects of teaching that covers, tries to cover, not all, but the most important parts of teaching. So this is something you have to bear in mind. You do not have to follow the order of the material, but please note that, etc., uh, as, uh, as, uh, as examples for you. You should start working on these tasks after the first couple of lessons of your observation time. But for you, you should start from now working on them, okay? I will give you another appendix, appendix of another book that I have, I will also post it for you in the, uh, our Facebook group, so that you can use it as an example as well, and then work on your own uh, observation, general kind of, global kind of observation task. Okay. So, so far I said only one okay. Right? <laughs> Good. Your mentor does not necessarily wish to know beforehand. This is something you have to bear in mind because you shouldn't talk about everything. So, your mentor does not necessarily wish to know beforehand which particular points you want to focus on, as that might influence his or her, her teaching. Okay, sorry, because of the. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, good. So, your mentor does not necessarily wish to know beforehand which particular points, so you shouldn't have addressed that, okay? Well, my point is to have, a, okay, you do it your own way, to have a general idea about what you teach, okay, etc. Maybe you don't need to show your observation task, okay? Keep it secret for you once you sit down, you just, and then uh, take notes, etc. At the same time, it is good uh, for you to find out about the focus of the lesson, if before you go, before you start, okay, you should, okay, uh, find out about the focus of the lesson. You will be observing. So you need to ask, this, what, is, what are you going to cover, uh, what you need, uh, what uh, activities are you going to do, etc. Okay, so you have to, you should have your, the teacher's plan, okay, in other words. This will help you in your choice of appropriate observation point. Okay, uh, uh, you will not want to concentrate on teachers' questions in a lesson, predominantly devoted to writing. 
right? So if, if the teacher is going to focus on the writing, uh, so it doesn't, you don't need to use an observation task or the aspects of an observation task related to uh, teacher's questions, right? Yeah, you can do that, but it's not the focus, okay, for writing. When the teacher is dealing with writing, it's not the focus for the teacher uh, to ask questions. You could, yes? Yes, yeah, you focus on other aspects, okay? I don't deal with that, but you know now writing, you know how it is taught, so you, you should uh, bear that in mind. You could, of course, invent your own observation task, and you are welcome to do so, okay, so if you can manage that, okay? But usually what you're going to do is refer to the models, to the examples, okay? And then make a combination of all of them to come up with your own, okay, observation task. Uh, okay, in the first two or three lessons that you observe, feel free to write down, okay, your general impressions without using these sheets at all. You can do that. Very beginning, first class, okay. Don't have to use observation task. You just come up and then make general observation notes, okay, about the lesson. This will help you to orient yourself within the school and give your mentor time to prepare for more focused observation to follow, right? <coughs> <coughs> so the first section will set tasks where you observe your mentor or your peers Teaching. Another thing that you should be doing, okay, maybe uh, I will have to oblige you to do it, okay, because you don't, I don't know, you do it, I don't, but I usually I have the impression you don't do. You do during presentations, okay, but you should do like uh, teaching, okay, and this is what we're going to do it, okay, while waiting for the administrative stuff to be accomplished, we will have uh, classes where you will be, okay, doing peer teaching, okay? Uh, you have to do peer teaching. So I we will talk about this at the end, and we will schedule, okay, force you, okay? I'm sorry because that's the human being, the human nature. Uh, it doesn't need the civilization a lot. <laughs> you have to make a combination of the, uh, you remember, mates, students who were in mates? One uh, student, one uh, teacher there presented the work of presentation about the uh, classroom management, talking about the carrot and the stick, okay, <laughs> and the stick, okay, okay, so, uh, that's, yes, 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 and then the lady, the, she's a good, she's doing PhD as well, in Rabat, the one who presented this uh, presentation, uh, yeah, you have to, yeah, but you have to make a combination, that's human nature. You need to make a combination of the two. Uh, so we will be doing that. So later, when you yourself start teaching, you will be required to be to produce detailed lesson plans. Okay. You should never teach a lesson which has not been carefully planned in written form. And you have the uh, lesson plans uh, already discussed for you, okay? So, the key factor of these tasks is that you gain insights into your teaching and find out more about yourself as a person and as a teacher. This will entail recording, we spoke about that, and we're going to do it in peer teaching, we will do recording, where possible, okay, we will do it, not where possible, <laughs> okay, videoing your own lessons, always ask both the mentors and the students permission first, if you want to do it for the, okay, and uh, setting up the equipment, etc. okay. Now let's move on to some uh, guidelines for lesson observation. 
Okay? Is it okay? So if you be, if you see that uh, it's not uh, something is missing from the uh, from the uh, PowerPoint, okay? Please tell me because I don't have a look there. So the observation of classroom teachers is serious business. It's not. It should not be approached casually. Please, this is very important. It should not be approached casually. This which should should already appear from your appearance. Okay, your clothes, your, okay, when you, your look, when you go to teach it, so you should look like a teacher, okay? Don't be too casual, okay? In addition to that, the way you deal with the teachers, the way you deal with the students, the way you deal with the administration, it, etc. I know you have a lot about that, but just to improve it more. Learning how to observe in a manner acceptable takes time. Careful reflection, personal tact, and creativity. An observer is a guest in the teacher's classroom who is there thanks to the goodwill of the cooperating teacher, especially in your cases, right? A guest's purpose for visiting is not to judge, which students do like a lot. I, I go to, I'm, I'm on Facebook and I, people put me, students put me on some groups and I can see the way they talk about, okay, teachers, okay? So your purpose is not to judge or to criticize the classroom teacher or to offer suggestions. I would rather you could offer suggestions, but in the form, okay, uh, uh, in a very, very polite way, okay? But simply to learn through observing, to learn through observing, okay? And it also, if you want to make a suggestion, not many times, once in a while, once in a while, okay? You have to show that the teacher, the hosting teacher, that he is the authority, he is the expert, he is etc. okay, he's a teacher. And teachers have this complexity, uh, superiority complex, what, what should I call it? Superiority complex, okay, kind of, uh, anyway. So, procedures. You should arrive in the classroom a few minutes ahead of time. If something unexpected comes up and you are not able to observe the class, you should notify your mentor as soon as possible. It is your responsibility to keep your mentor informed. Maybe these things may look to you as yeah, something normal, I know. But in practice, it seems uh, that uh, they tend to be uh, ignored. Once you have entered the classroom, you should be as unobtrusive as possible, sitting <coughs> where directed by the teacher. It is important to bear in mind that you are not a regular member of the class. You should take your written notes as unobtrusively as possible, indirectly, discreetly, etc. Okay? And you should not initiate or pursue a conversation unnecessarily. Observe, take notes. That's it. And when your the teacher finishes, you can embark into a discussion after the students leave, etc. Okay? With your host teacher, if you have some ideas to discuss with him or her. Any notes you take during a classroom visit should be made accessible to the teacher if he or she requests. If he or she requests. If not, yeah, just keep it for yourself. It is imperative that you keep impressions of the class private and confidential. In, if you have something, you know, you, you know, keep it for yourself. Any direct references, as I told you, you should also show the teacher that he is authority, okay? Any direct references to teachers in either formal or informal situations must be kept anonymous, okay? When you are doing your report, etc., in your, in your portfolios, and also for your research, okay, you should keep things anonymous, okay? 
Now, this is something also important to, uh, to have with you, class profile, okay? You need to, keep, to make a record of this as well, the class profile, the school, the teacher, okay? Class, number of children or boys and girls, as you say students, normally I would prefer here students, okay? Age of students. When they did they start learning English, level, number of English lessons per week, number of teachers they have had so far, course book they use now, and then course books they have used so far, supplementary materials used concurrently with textbook sometimes many times maybe usually or never so teachers use extra okay uh, supplementary materials is the classroom a set set aside for english lessons one particular kind of classroom reserved or just for english that's the meaning of this but usually in our case it's not usual seating arrangement what is the kind of arrangement so I think it's uh, the same everywhere. I, is, it po is it possible to have some teachers who do different something like this in classroom? Yeah. High school? Never. Yes. Never. Impossible. Huh? Yes. Uh? It's like if you may not take the U format. Let's say you have the U format, then you have another U in the middle. Yeah. Well, but but it's, it's, the same. it's not very, very large, right? Yes. If you for the students, it's not the Sometimes. Uh, 25 to 30 tables, how are you going to arrange the tables to have a uniform? Yeah. So, it's a lot of time. Anyway, so usually it's not done, but it's, yeah, if the, if the number is limited and the tables, logistics are okay, it can be done. But anyway, usual seating, you, it's the familiar, traditional, usual uh, seating arrangement. Any other relevant information, some other kind of information you notice you want to include in this class profile. So, that's the, uh, okay, do you have any questions be about this before we go on? <coughs> yes? I think questions like, like this, largest view of in conversation with students and teachers as well, and we have seen that it should be just observed. Mm -hmm. so, Which questions? The class profile? Yeah, the class profile. Oh, what, is, what is the question you are going start, to do? Yes, you can do that, but not the very beginning. There are some questions you can leave, uh, maybe the second class or third class, okay, while you collect. But it, as you can see, this is not something which is a big deal to ask, okay? It's something normal, something taken for granted. It's easy to ask, easy to get the answer for, okay? So you, you can do it, not the very, very, very first class, okay? Uh, so, yes, that's it, okay? And then uh, that's the only one, I think. Number of English lessons per week, it's also you can ask... Uh, your teach colleagues, <laughs> classmates, okay? Normally, how many uh, classes, how many uh, classes do we have in high school? High school, it depends on the school? On the stream. On the stream, yeah. uh, so literary? The, uh, for, uh, even the level from the second part, for the literary stream, they have five hours a week. For yes. the uh, human sciences, yes. they have four hours. For the scientific and all the other uh, streams, yeah. only three hours. Yes. Yeah. But the sun sh should not exceed 21 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, have a look here. Uh, guidelines. I think it's included in here. We're going to have one class devoted to this. Okay? The guidelines. We're going to have one class, maybe a large, long class, devoted to this, okay? The guidelines of the, uh, okay? Let me see the table of contents. Yes, this is it. It's page 70. Yes. I, don't, I think it's included 
I saw it somewhere anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, book. Yes, okay. So uh, I'm going to do to show to give you this on the Facebook group and you can get them from uh, Hasim's website. Tawjihat, yeah, this is the Al Ital Marji Ilm Tihal Muahad Madat Lua Majami Al Masalik. So here you have the syllabus for the exam. That's for the exam. Okay. But I here you have rubrics of the exam Okay. Okay, anyway, I will find it. I have also the... Okay. No. Anyway, so I will have the documents, okay. We will get it later. Yes, any other? Yeah, any other questions?